Hey everyone, this is Danny B. Welcome back to the AI build series on Trains 22. We're building an entire route based off of random images that AI has generated. In the last episode, we worked on a looping river bridge. Now we've only been extending the route in one direction here. A lot of you guys kind of agreed with me in the last episode that we should go back to the other side of the map and work on things out there. So I asked for some great ideas to which I found my favorite one from one of the comments below. Rocker1052 said, Love the video, Danny. I think we should go back to the other side and have a prompt of a train going down some tracks past a logging freight yard nestled into the mountains in an area between Kentucky and Georgia or something like that. Keep up the good work, man. Appreciate that comment, man, and I agree. I think I would like to do something like that. So we're going to use your comment for the inspiration here. So with that being said, let's head on over to Bing AI and see what it gives us. All right, so I'm going to put in modern, realistic, freight, paste, train going down some tracks past the logging freight yard nestled into the mountains, an area between Kentucky and Georgia, alongside a river flowing through the area. And let's see what that gives us. All right, so we've got four results here. Let's start with number one. Okay, so a few things I'm noticing. One, it looks like these are a lot more pine trees than anything, some very tall pine trees. Got a little camp here with a little pier that's on the river banks. Have one single track though. It's like this isn't really a, a logging freight yard. It's like there's a logging operation happening here. Maybe here's a random track that comes to the power line for some reason. Uh, not quite sure if I'm feeling this one, but let's move on to the next results. Now this is a massive facility here. And why do we have all these smoke pipes here? What's happening over here? It's like we got a steel plant on the other side of the river here happening. But it's also got some tracks and yards over here. Massive yard, massive facility here. Uh, we've got a looks like Canadian National and BNSF train moving through here. Quite a few tracks moving their way through here. Um, this does certainly fit the bill though, and I don't think we have all these tracks going all over the place like it's showing here. But uh, this is certainly something though. Once again, we have quite a few smokestacks for some reason. Uh, quite a few houses here in the logging camp here. Uh, we do have the, the main line coming through here along the river. It looks like here's a boat actually in the river. That's an interesting thing. Um, do have another stretch of tracks here. It looks like I see a few tracks of some logging cars through here. I have no clue why it's got all these smoke pipes coming through here. Maybe I'm not familiar with the way logging places work, but it doesn't quite make sense to me. Quite a few piles of logs. This one, this one's a possibility. This one could, could be done, but it's gonna take maybe a little bit of work and adaptation to it, but it's a possibility. And this one has just a lot going on here. We've got uh, the, the main line coming through here. A train is leaving out with its uh, cut of logs. Um, here's some more tracks coming through here. Looks like just some roads. Just tons of places here where lots of uh, logs are being held. Um, quite a big facility here. And again, all these smoke pipes. I, I gotta look up real logging places. because The smoke pipes have just really thrown me off. Is this a real thing at logging places? And then we got piles of logs that are in the water. Now I think that is a real thing, um, but it just doesn't make sense right here, uh, right along the tracks for some reason, but um, could be a possibility. So this is definitely one of the hardest ones I think I've done so far. A lot of this is uh, very interesting, some very interesting results in this one. But if I had to pick one, I think my preferred option is going to be option number three now this is kind of interesting though because if you recall on that side of the map um, the train tracks are actually going uh on the what would be the left side of the river this is showing tracks over on the right side of the river so i'm wondering are we looking at a separate creek that's formed off the river are we looking at the other side from the river there's a few question marks here but i think we can still work with this image to make something. Now, I don't know if we're gonna have all these smoke pipes. I gotta look into the specifics, uh, and we'll get into that in the narration if that's what we're doing, but I gotta look into the specifics of a freight yard and see is that legitimate or do we need to omit that part? 
Um, but we do have some log barns here, a few other establishments here, maybe some housing for people who are working here, offices, you name it. Um, tons of piles of yard. Looks like we have uh, the main line, a, a, another a set of tracks, quite a few coming through here. Looks like some tracks here in the middle. Maybe even some more tracks. No, that looks like it's a road. So I think we got some tracks that come in here to, to hunt, kind of house some log cars. But other than that, I think for the most part, this one could be doable. So uh, over on the other side, we're going to create a logging facility and uh, try to use this image to the best of our ability. So come along with us and let's see where this build actually takes us. Hey all and welcome into phase four of the AI route build in Trains 22. So this is the AI inspired route build and today we are going to be making a logging facility with a yard coming along the river as inspired by one of our commenters. So I want to go ahead and apologize at one point you're going to see the footage just suddenly disappear. I, in order to do this, I have to go through phases where I am recording on OBS and then I pause because I need to step away, I need to stop doing it, or whatever it might be. Well, there was one time when, when I unpaused, I didn't realize that I didn't actually unpause, and so I did a lot of stuff off camera, so we are going to miss just a little bit towards the end of this, uh, and towards the end of this time lapse video of the build. But, again, still got most of it, so welcome into this one. This is probably one of my favorite parts now that it's done, because I've had this for done for a few weeks now. Uh, I come down of something uh, over the last couple weeks, a lot of you know sinus, mucus, all that stuff, and I just found it awful. Couldn't really record for a while. So we're just now getting a chance to record all this. But the logging facility is really nice because it gives me a chance to have something to operate a little bit. Um, put together some cuts of log cars and s ship those out, bring in an empty train, and do it all over again. So it's been a lot of fun. And uh, the power I'm utilizing is custom-made Baldwin & Company Railroad Corporation SD40-2s, which hang out in the yard. Um, to me, I guess this is like my version of rj corman my last name is baldwin so i did baldwin and company railroad corporation just a little fun with it um but yeah overall it's been a lot of fun this river we've been uh, working on making this a little bit more windy some creeks and it, it starts to expand where i think it's going to become more like it's going into a lake as well with these creeks um so overall i've been having a lot of fun with this one and uh i'll just uh be quiet for a while and let y'all enjoy the terrain making
overall, I was pretty happy with the way the creeks ended up working out on this one. And uh, it kind of gave me just a nice thing. Starting with the creeks, kind of like kind of like I did in the last episode where we worked on the looping uh, train bridge scene. Um, working on the creek really gave me a good place to uh, work and build around it with the tracks. And in this case, uh, I was able to do that. Now, doing the tracks first, I was able to then bring out this little dirt road and just kind of make that work as well and figure out where an area where a bridge is going to go and eventually bring that into the yard area over there. So that was nice to go ahead and do that. Uh, I was looking for a very specific type of bridge scene. Um, had to go back and find a few things in order to find that. Um, but in the end, I found what I was looking for. Now, it did take a little bit of moving around and shuffling things about, uh, but I, I was able to come up with what I was looking for in the end of this bridge and uh, not just use the traditional bridge splines. I was able to use a more of a fixed bridge structure and then add in bridge track over top of it and make the look that I was going for right here. Now I can tell you right now those tracks are a little too close for what they really should be. Um, but those can easily be moved around and move the assets around just a little bit to make it all work out and we do that in the end but uh, it was definitely a good place to get started and just kind of establish the track work early on and uh, make sure that we knew the direction this was going. I did utilize locomotives back there. You saw it for just a split second, but I utilized those just in order to give me a reference of if the tracks were far enough spaced out. And once I got it where I liked it, I decided, okay, that track is good to go. And we can start on making sure that everything else is lined up and the elevation is correct and get all of the uh, extra splines with the embankment laid down just the same way we have been doing throughout the entirety of this build so far. At this point we are working on making the first opening here one of the first little uh, branches that we've had come off this main line and this is going to be where it comes into the yard itself now it actually comes immediately down elevation compared to the main line uh, which looks much weirder when you're in this stage of it but once all the finished elevation gets into it it's going to look a lot better over here um, and then at that point I was able to kind of make some more uh, branches where the yard lines come in and get this all going good to where we had just the right amount of tracks that I was looking for 
uh, to give plenty of staging areas for the log cars that are going to be in this facility over here. I had thought about doing another line there off the main line, but uh, I was having a little few issues with it and, and uh, overall just decided it didn't make sense to do that. So we just went ahead and cut off that idea and just kept bringing out our yard lines out through here. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and establish the forestry industry right here. Um, we were looking at using this one, but I decided that it didn't make sense to use when I had all those trees right there in the middle. So we're gonna go with actually the forestry basic in the end. But uh, using that, just setting it there, gave me a chance to go ahead and start getting everything properly lined up. There's the basic forestry going in. Break apart the track there and put that in the place right where it needs to go and connect it and that area is good to really start detailing it at that point because i've got all the tracks pretty much lined up exactly the way i needed it and uh, at that point i was kind of free to go ahead and start working on more of the elevations and getting everything lined up the correct way going on with these tracks here but it just took a lot more uh, spline additions and just lining up to make this work out perfectly it, it was it was definitely giving me some trouble for some reason but uh, the the ele the process of lowering the elevation on this I found to be just excruciatingly painful and slow to just get it all lined up but in the end I got exactly where I, the way I needed it to, to be so that when I add in the embankment it just all lines up nice without being too high above the grass so it takes a little bit to get it all correct but uh, you know when it comes to uh, the topography of the maps uh, it's definitely one of the longer processes of it all but uh, if you had the patience to do it right it comes out looking very nice in the end.
now we can actually start working on this bridge a little bit and th that this particular one has some openings there so we used those uh, retaining walls just to kind of hide it in a little bit and then we can start the embankment and getting it all lined up now these embankments are gonna they have a little bit of an opening there as well but we can hide those with shrubs pretty easily for the most part um, but in the end uh, I, I kind of like this bridge I really like the way it come out it uh, looks very simple it looks like it just works here and I think it's a it's a good asset if you're if you have like you know two tracks you know of you know that need a bridge I would recommend using these in the same way that I did you can go back and find the asset here in the video if you need to find it and then for reference um, and then download it on a download station but um, I was pretty happy with that and it gave me a good point to go ahead and just start working on uh, connecting all these embankments apologize if I'm not really saying too much in this video as compared to other ones but honestly this is just one of those that was just you know not a lot to it honestly it was just you know a very relaxing uh, topography heavy video there is gonna be some you know scenery work getting into it once we get the yard kind of going more but honestly just not a lot to say it's just one of those uh, areas that's very rural um, very scenic and I just hope you guys uh, enjoy it but hey that's why I put music on these things so you guys uh, have at least something to hear and not just a bunch of silence later so um, but hey right here this is actually pretty cool how I'm actually doing these little islands on the uh, on the along the river lake whatever you want to call it and just giving a little bit of topography there as well so but yeah not really too much to say they're in the process of this but um, you know overall this is just a fun section of the map to make And of course is everyone's favorite part when it comes to these uh, when you extend out sections it's a lot to first lay down and get everything leveled out from each side so in this case we're leveling out the uh, area that where we've made the tracks and where we have made the road 
And then, once we get through that part, only then can we look at then, you know, trying to even out elevations and connecting that mountain, which is uh, easier said than done, as we found out in all of these videos so far. Uh, definitely takes a lot of work to do this part, but uh, it is worth it in the end. Now I had to go to the other side of the map to grab these rocks because uh, according to the AI, this was a very, very, very rocky section of creek through here. So we're going to end up laying out pretty much all the different kinds of rocks that I can for this area and uh, really blend it all in into this river because when we get into this particular part, this is where it gets real shallow. This is, I, I, even though it showed a boat going up the creek, we're not going to put a boat in this area because this is, this would be a very, very shallow uh, creek that I wouldn't trust anyone taking a boat for here. Maybe a kayak and, and that's being generous, but there was a lot of rocks in the AI, so we are putting down a ton of rocks through here. About every kind we can, honestly. Now, this part here had a little section of the embankment that was just a little too high from the way the, the uh, ter terrain ended up being there. So we put on one of those little retaining walls alongside of it. That was the only part that really needed something to retain it in. For the most part though, the embankment did a job uh, right through there. And now this part takes a minute here, but we're gonna go ahead and add in all of the ballast embankment into the yard. And you might think, does it even need that? Can you just use a, use a texture? but in my opinion it still looks better to do that than just putting down the gray ballast texture um, you'll see it in the end but uh, i think the overall effect of still using that even in the yard area is the right strategy and i recommend it for you in building your routes as well On that note, my track work is done for this area now, uh, aside from the stuff that we're going to be putting in here in the middle. So I'm actually going with some straight run track for the middle area. Why? Well, let's get into that. I, I, I want an area set up where trains can stage, can park, can maneuver from each side if they need to just make a short little journey. And right now, in its current stage, this might not work the greatest, but once we expand the map out some more in a further video, I feel that we can better work this area to make it flow and work better together. Um, so as of now, it's, it's, it, definitely, it definitely is useful for what I'm using it for. Uh, but it can only get better, I think. So uh, we're connecting these with straight run tracks and that gives us the platform to then uh, start, you know, coming up with this whole little facility here. This is just a logging facility. We've got another road here that's connecting over to the gravel, oh, sorry, to the dirt road. Uh, this is more of a paved, smoothed out uh, 
dirt asphalt road thing um, but we're gonna go ahead and put in the grade crossing now we're not gonna use uh, we're not gonna use any lights or something because this is an area that's not gonna get traveled much unless it's people who are working here so we're just gonna add in our um, you know our our rubber grade crossings here and then we're gonna add in just a little uh, cross bucks on each side and that is gonna be all all that we need for this area here now I put down a six track one technically it's not six tracks but it, I was missing a five track I didn't find a five track one so I just went with that for this one and uh, but in you know overall I still think it's okay the area looks pretty nice it gives you know a little bit more character in it and uh, I like it this side over here is actually interesting because it actually flows right over to the other side of the yard there from the main and it also has some areas that comes into those two straight run tracks there going up and down uh, so I like the way I, I did that um, I, I, I thought that was a nice touch a, a pretty nice way to make it all transition and once we add in everything else uh, this area looks really nice now now that it's completed which again uh, I think once we get into the next part where we can extend it out a little bit more, uh, this is going to work really nice in order to, uh, you know, then t take trains through there, get, get the logs put on, and then bring them over onto the other side. Now, I'm putting down all these, um, all these cars here. These actually don't work with the logging facility, sadly. I can make them look nice and put logs on them, but they don't work with the logging facility. Um, only a couple of cars actually work here. Um, to take loads in and out the one I found to be best is um, some 42 uh, 42 foot um, Skeleton cars I found I found some more modern skeleton cars on a download station But for whatever reason There's I can't figure out how to get them to take enough um, Because it only wants to take like one log it because just the way the load is made on it so if you guys can recommend some more modern um, log cars to me please let me know down in the comments I'd like to know what would be a better option to have modern logging cars because I feel like the ones I'm using are feel rather old honestly so if you have any suggestions please drop them down below in the comments I am no expert on signals. I'm really not. I don't think I'm doing a good job of my signaling. Um, and I might have to turn this over to some friends to help me do better later on. But all I know is that you have to have some on each side in order for it to just work at all. So that's what I've been doing here. Um, I have since cleaned it up just a little bit. But I'm still no expert when it comes to signaling. And I don't ever expect to be. Um, but yeah, I uh, think I could probably do a little bit better, but I still have something for it to work and just, you know, be able to use the area. And from this point like the the AI image just you know had a bunch of random stuff everywhere piles of logs everywhere a few random buildings um, 
And it had those smokestacks that we already know is not not realistic. We found that out. That is not realistic at all. So we didn't. We were not going to be using that in this in this build. Um, so overall, I took just some you know creative liberty, just kind of put the stuff randomly down. Some a few buildings they didn't even have to make sense. It's just there in the in the area. Um, maybe they have a purpose. Maybe they don't. Um, but I just had, need to have something there though. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of just wung it here um, and put down some random stuff in the yard area and uh, you can be my guest as to determine what use some of these buildings have for the area. All I know is that they're there and this area is working to produce logs that are going to be shipped out by a train. And that's all the purpose we really need this area to have. We don't need to overthink this too much. Um, and at least I'm not going to overthink it. And uh, in the end, I'm happy with the result of all of the assets we placed in. Maybe we could still add in a few people. Um, I would I'd like to find some good assets for, you know, workers. Um, maybe even some logging worker assets. Stuff like that. There's probably still some other things that I could do to spruce up this area, um, but we weren't going to worry about that too much in this episode of it. Um, that's always some stuff that I can I can just clean up some stuff off camera. You guys don't have to worry about that too much. The, the basic principle of these videos is to establish the basic idea of the area we are in. So, but that that's really about it for that part of it. And uh, in the end, we're getting close to having the yard area pretty much complete. I don't think there's too much more that really gets added in after this. I'm just kind of adding in the details of like grass and things like that before we really work on the areas outside of the yard. At that point, we are pretty much done with the, I guess, the trim pieces, if you will. And now we can really just kind of go out there and get going with the grass and stuff like that. And uh, get this area looking, you know, just kind of fully detailed in to the best of my av availability. So, we're going up these grass blinds and just really filling in the holes here. As you can tell, this area is coming in pretty nicely, filling it in of all the grass and the and the shrubs and the bushes and all that stuff, just the same as we have been doing for all these other uh, areas here lately. 
Um, but I will say it's not all going to be like this. Give me a little bit. We're going to be able to break this up. It is a logging facility after all. So we're going to have an area here where it's kind of cleared out. And, uh, but, but even along the riverbank here, there's not as many trees through hit for this area. Um, mainly because of the fact that, well, this area has been, been cut out a little bit, you know, that they are working to get logs out of this area. So we can't have too many trees in this area. Um, but again, give me a little bit. We're almost there, uh, to where we're actually going to be making a whole lot of changes here. But, uh, also you can see here, I'm looking for new types of trees along the edge of that area in the AI image it looked more like a bunch of um pine trees so i've been using a lot of maple trees here lately so this gave me a chance to do something just a little bit different and uh, add in some new trees that we haven't really been using before so you know a little little different here um we will still try to blend it all in and make it look you know like it still works together from what we have been using but uh you know just a little little different here uh, from what we've uh, had based on the way the AI images. we have decided okay I think we've done about all we really can over there in that yard area for the most part it's time to go ahead and start connecting in this mountain so we've got to make a big elevation shift right here and bring it up really high and then work on uh, just kind of blending everything in together here but uh, you know that's kind of what it takes to make all these mountains and make them look correct so we'll kind of make those go together and then blend it all in and that should that should be pretty good You know my thoughts when I'm making these mountains? When they start looking all spiky and just kind of wild looking, you know what that reminds me of? You ever seen the, I think it was 07, made Incredible Hulk movie with, um, oh, the old actor who first played him, um, blanking on his name. But anyways, he fights, um, he, fly, he fights, um, what, what do they call him? Um, um, uh, Anyways, the, 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 the opposite of Hulk that he fights, I'm blanking on his name, correct me in the comments, um, but the way he is has such a spiky, you know, back compared to Hulk, and it reminds me of, of him. Is his name, it's not Apocalypse, what, what, what is his name? 
I'm actually gonna have to Google it just because I'm curious now. Bad guy and Hulk movie. Um, uh, Abomination. That's what it is. Not Apocalypse. Abomination. Uh, it reminds me of Abomination's back, especially when I have just this green color on it. That's uh, that's always been what it's reminded me of. So uh, yeah, just random thoughts while we're watching this back, but uh, yeah, that's that's what it reminds me of. Now, we're getting close to where I had the mistake of accidentally uh, not unpausing uh, when I thought, you know, I was recording. So, um, so I had a long period where my recording was still paused. It's going to cut out. Um, right after we went through a long process of putting down all of these, um, all these stumps, all these rocks, all this stuff. That's essentially just debris from the area they have cleared out for the logging area. And it's a shame y'all missed it because it took a lot of going back and forth, back and forth. Actually, the main reason I paused was because I needed to go to another map and first find the sample of mud that was used in one area and then bring, bring that back into this map and start going at it. Um, so it's a shame I missed all that. I'm just going to cut in through a lot of the work being done in this area. Um, but it, it took a lot of took a lot more than I thought it would to make an area where it had been cleared out from the logging projects happening over here. Um, but uh, in the end, you can still get a good idea of the of the process it took to get all these stumps put down. But it's a shame you missed out on all the other steps that went into this part. So uh, yeah, it's unfortunate there. I put down this building, and then I put down a few more trees after that. Kind of you know in that in the like you know corners of this area. But, uh, and also found, you know, once I had all those trees going, I was like, well, let's kind of blend that in to the tree line we have for the new area there. But, uh, yeah, after that, you know, it's a shame y'all missed out on a good portion there. Um, because it was right around somewhere in this area. I put down all these maple shrubs also in there because so you can see some trees are starting to regrow. And then somewhere around here, I had paused the recording right about... Right about now, I think, somewhere right around in here is where I paused it. Yeah, right, right, right after this area. And then suddenly, uh, you know, suddenly I had to take a break and boom, here we are, we're back. So yeah, that's unfortunate. Y'all missed out on a lot there and you could really see how much really went into it after I realized, oh crap, I'm not recording. Um, but, you know, it's a little mistake, you know, can happen. I'm surprised it didn't take longer for it to happen in all honesty. Um, but you all still get the basic idea of what goes into it. You are, you are actually going to get to see me do a little copy paste job over on the other side of that road because we're not just going to have one area that's been cleared out for logs here. So actually, yeah, we're working on copying and uh, pasting and making this area into be another area where some trees have been cleared out. So enjoy this. Now, I can see a little bit of grass is actually bleeding over that dirt road, but honestly, I'm not going to worry about that too much. That's an area that's, you know, not going to be impacted. It's just it's just side scenery there from the tracks, and it uh, didn't really matter too much to me. The, the nice thing about how I make my tracks is that I don't have to worry about grass getting onto the tracks because I, you know, raise it up a little bit and put the embankment on there so that when I'm actually going through and doing that, I don't have to worry about that too much. So I really like the way it, the finished product is on it.
as you can see, I even though I know we're going to be transitioning into having more of the maple trees again, I'm still coming out through here with some of those pine trees and kind of, you know, putting them out there just for, you know, the area of the logging facility because we're kind of going off the fact that, hey, this, this area was rich in a different kind of tree and uh, that's what they're really trying to, to capture out here. That's what they're really trying to cut down and, and you know, and harvest and use. Um, so yeah, I still use some of those out for there, but then we started to blend in the maple trees there um, Just to really work this in and make it transition well into the existing environment that already existed here And uh, just kind of make a little tree line through here with it all and I really like the way this is all turned out uh, As I progress with the tree work here now I, I, I do want to say hey if, for those of you who are you know watching all the way through all these if you enjoy watching you know these videos you might also enjoy some of the rail fanning adventures that I have on this channel I uh, it's a, again I said earlier I've been sick for the last few weeks so it's a shame I haven't been able to record anything new because I actually had a great weekend of rail fanning back at the beginning of September I went to Knoxville Tennessee I went to the Tennessee Volunteers first football game of the year. I'm a graduate from the University of Tennessee actually. So I love the Tennessee Volunteers. We're off to a great start. And uh, while I was there in Knoxville, I did some rail fanning along some of the Norfolk Southern lines out through there. Went back to Harriman, Tennessee. Went to Rockwood, Tennessee. And uh, my goodness, you wouldn't believe some of the catches that I got. Some foreign power, a special interest paint scheme. Uh, I'm looking forward to sharing that. I don't want to share too many details with you guys. So I want you all to be looking out for that video here on the channel. Uh, hopefully I can get that out to you guys next week. Um, but yeah, just really looking forward to getting that to put together. One of the best days of rail fending I think I've had this year. And uh, you know, for a guy who's mainly in CSX country, to get to see all those unique Norfolk Southern trains coming through uh, was a very good treat for me. So this line that I'm making here, the AI route, in my eyes, it could work for CSX and Norfolk Southern. And I think at some point I'm going to have a place where two lines overlap each other. I don't know where it's going to be. This is going to go on for quite a long ways. But this immediate part, while I have my Baldwin and company working the, the uh, logging yard, the main line I'm going to say is a Norfolk Southern line. So that's how I'm seeing it. That's my thoughts on it. And uh, maybe every now and again, a rare CSX train needs to be rerouted just to come through this area. But uh, that, in my mind, this is a Norfolk Southern line. So if you had any curiosity on what direction this is going, this is going to be a Norfolk Southern main line map, I think. Uh, with some areas where it's going to overlap into CSX country as well.
right guys, as you can see, I have copied up my stretch of 2D trees. And you all know what that means. If you've watched up to episode four of the AI build at this point, that means we are done. We, this is the last part we always do. It is such an accomplishment to get to this point in the build and be able to just copy and paste away all of these 2D trees and know that all of the hard work is done at this point. Again, this was probably a more, I mean, I guess the, the you know, the, doing the yard itself was a little challenging, but in terms of just the overall scenery of the rest of the area, um, rural areas are kind of easy to me. You know, you don't got to overthink them too much. You just have to really, you know, make the areas, you know, around the tracks look good. You know, use 3D trees for your edges and then do 2D trees for everything else. Um, get the hills good, you, and even if they're not perfectly even and smooth. It doesn't really matter. The trees are going to really help hide all that anyways. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really happy with the way this has turned out. I overall really liked it. Um, I hope you guys did too. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are on this part of it and also be sure as always let me know some more prompts that you guys would like to see if you don't give me anything i'm just gonna have to wing it and come up with the idea myself so uh but this has been a lot of fun as we got done to phase four now my my plans guys if you don't know um i'm good i'm good buddies with nugget trains i'm kind of a I guess you could say a content creator for the Nugget Trains community now. Um, what we're going to do, what Nugget Nice plans are, is once I am done with this, it will be a route on the site. But what we're actually going to do is every year. So at the end of 2024, that's phase or that's season one. They're all in different phases per episode. Um, but season one at the end of 2024. We're going to release it. We're going to release the map, whatever stage it is in at that point. We're going to release that and we're going to do these seasons at a time. So season one build is going to come out at the end of this year and season two at the end of 2025, season three at the end of 2026 and so forth and so forth. So hope you guys have been enjoying this series so far. If you are new, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to Danny B Train so you never miss another new video right here on my channel. We do trains, AI builds, and we do um, real rail fanning videos. So there's a lot of content here to enjoy if you are a rail fan, if you're a train enjoyer. So be sure to uh, subscribe to this channel and never miss a new video right here from Danny B Train. So thanks for watching and until next time, Leave me your thoughts down below. Give me some suggestions for new prompts for the series. And we hope you have a great day. Bye, guys. Four years and 1,400 miles between us. Seven numbers I just can't forget on my screen. Different paths and broken tracks led us on. Face in